it's Jonathan Senor Smoke from the Ring of Fire in Westchester County. I, uh, I bid you welcome. It's December 26, 2019, the day after Christmas, obviously, and I am not wasting any time jumping on camera here talking about my uh, Christmas or my holy smoke, as I, as I call it. Um, typically with these holidays, for us, Christmas, New Year's, um, I am going to be grilling things that we don't normally throw on the grill, i.e. prime rib. That's what I did yesterday. And I look at these as great uh, case studies to see how these grills perform under um, some degree of duress, right? Because just putting a rack of ribs in a smoker on a Traeger or a Kamado for that matter um, and just letting them rip, um, it's especially on a pellet grill, I mean, there's not much action going on there. But when you start doing things like using larger cuts of meat with lots of bones and you're actually using things like the rotisserie which I did in this case um, you're starting to push the grill and see what it's capable of so let's report on this yesterday I did a three bone nine pound plus uh, prime rib that I picked up in my buddy uh, Peter down at Vincent's and Arthur Avenue and um, I did it on the uh, on the Kamado Joe on the Jotisserie now um, I did this on New Year's Day this year and that video, which I thought was a good one, but I was criticized for it because I called it perfect prime rib, but in the seven or eight minute video, I never actually detailed how I made it. I just talked about the results. So let me just knock that out right from the get-go. The preparation of this couldn't be simpler, all right? You get a, it all begins, the foundation, with a really good piece of meat. So again, I went down to Vincent's, I got a prime cut. Um, and uh, it was nine pounds, three bones, and all I did, and actually what he had done is he had put, um, he had trussed it with uh, rosemary, okay? So all I did was rub it up with olive oil. I put uh, Meat Church Holy Cow rub on it, you know, rather, uh, uh, I didn't actually coat it. I gave it a very heavy sprinkling on all sides. And then, um, and then I hit it with some very hard, uh, coarse salts, uh, sea salts from Brazil that I've used on the picanha steaks. Um, that, uh, that, that we made uh, uh, last summer, which is very good salt. Um, and that was about it. And just put it in the refrigerator and let it rest for uh, you know, an hour or so. That's not necessary, but just in terms of when people were coming over in my house, that's just how it worked out. And the Kamado Joe was set up with um, uh, the jotisserie, a, um, a drip pan in the base, the middle of the base, and I had a ring of charcoal. I'm using the Wicked uh, Good Charcoal out of New England. And um, through the cook, I did um, hit it with some uh, uh, cherry wood chips. Now, um, so that's basically the setup. And the cook time was three between 325 and 350 degrees. I'd say we leaned definitely more towards the 325. And um, that was for two hours. I actually pulled it at an hour and 50 minutes. I'll get into that later. So it couldn't be simpler. Good meat, you rub, olive oil, uh, two hours at 325, let's say, and then you're done. You just let it sit and then slice and you're good to go. So anybody who criticized me in the last video where I didn't go, I didn't go through the prep and the how-to, I just did it, done. Now, so my, my issue with this cook, and again, the prime rib, the bottom lines came out fantastic. My guests loved it, so that's, but I have to always critique and try to improve. And the, the main issue, aside from the rotisserie just starting to give me issues uh, along the way, was that there was just too much smoke. And the guy that I mentioned up in, uh, uh, he's, he's, he's a customer up north a bit, he was using his Big Joe on a 7-8 bone, 7 bone primer, full one. And he was having the same problem, to the point where he had to actually lift the lid and just cook it with the lid up so there wouldn't be as much smoke. Um, which of course is going to increase your uh, temperature uh, it's going to flame flames going to get more oxygen it was too much smoke and the reason I think um, that was puzzling because when you're cooking at 325 350 degrees you're not smoking anymore um, what I think was going on was that the prime rib because of um, when it was spinning that even though I had that aluminum tray at the bottom uh, it wasn't catching on the dripping it's just because of the geometry of the way the rib was shaped and, it, and, and some of the drippings were, cut, were not hitting it, they were hitting the charcoal, you know, um, and we weren't getting flare-ups. I guess maybe there wasn't enough oxygen to get in to cause a flare-up, but it was just, it was coming out of smoke instead. So what I would think 
would probably be, you know, you ignite the charcoals, there's smoke for about 10, 15 minutes, and then it mellows down, and now you're, co you're cooking with just embers. Um, I mean, this thing was on for an hour and 50 minutes, a little under two hours, and it was smoking every time I lift the lid. There was a lot of smoke in there, and which was not a good thing because the folks that were coming over are not fans of smoked meat. My wife hates it. So while we're, you know, I'm going through this, I'm just saying to myself, my God, they're not going to like this because I'm telling you, there was, it was imbued with smoke, um, just, you know, saturated uh, with it. So fortunately for the last half hour or so, the smoke did die down. Um, um, the other thing I pulled out of this was this thing here. It was completely worthless. This is the Traeger Instant Read Thermometer. I mean, the thing does, didn't even register. Uh, my thermal works died recently, so I brought this home, and I'm putting it in the meat. It's not even registering a temperature, so I had to do it by kind of like the touch and um, the sight test. Um, I knew that the recipe called for two to two and a half hours. I pulled it at 150, again, because I think the amount of smoke that it was giving out, it had actually darkened the meat. So um, we took it off, let it rust for about 20 minutes, cut it to it, it was great. It was great. If anything, I probably should have let it cook for 10 more minutes because as we got into the interior, it was a little too rare. And I understand there are people who want their steak basically walking or breathing. Um, that would have been perfect for you, but you know, for my guest and for myself, I would have liked to cook through a little bit more. So. I'm definitely, next time I do this, 325, 350, it's a solid two hours. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, um, would I do it on this again? I would. And, and, and the thing is, is that I love live fire cooking. I love spit roasting. So, I'm going to have to try to figure out some way um, uh, to, to, to expand the size of the capture area of the drippings. But also, I'm going to have to have room to put charcoal in. So, I'm going uh, to figure that one out. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm probably going to do this on New Year's Day, not as big of a cut though. So I might, what I might do is either, I might do it on this again, or I might actually pull the alfresco out and do it over the alfresco solid fuel box, which I've done that as well. Um, I, I've done this three times now on the alfresco, on the Kamado Joe, and did it on the Memphis pellet grill. And, you know, pellet grills are so convenient, they're so easy, but I mean, there's just something to be said for cooking it over that, that live flame. Um, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's just a primal, uh, thing that just resonates. So, um, I'm going to figure it out and, uh, next time we're going to get it without as much smoke. That's about it. Any questions, Jonathan at Curtos.com. Come visit Ring of Fire. Come visit Curtos. The information's on the screen right now.